Question number 18. A, B and C are positive integers. The ratio A to B is equal to 5 to 6 and the ratio B to C is equal to 8 to 11. We need to work out the smallest possible value of A plus B plus C. So at the moment my B value on this ratio is 6 and my B value on this ratio is 8. So what I need to do is I need to find equivalent ratios for this one and this one to make our B values the same. So I need to make this 6 and this 8 the same as each other. Okay, but we're looking for the smallest possible value. So I'm looking for the lowest common multiple of 6 and 8. The lowest common multiple of 6 and 8. Um, and the lowest common multiple of 6 and 8 is going to be 24. Okay, I can list out the multiples of 6 and the multiples of 8. And the lowest one I find will be 24. Okay, so now I need to find an equivalent ratio of this here. So um, where um, this value here is 24. So I need to multiply both of these numbers by 4. So my a to b is now going to be equal to 5 times 4, which is 20, to 6 times 4, which is 24. Okay, so this ratio and this ratio is the same. I'm now going to do a similar thing for b to c. Because b to c, um, I need to make the 8 into a 24, so I need to times it by 3. I also need to times the 11 by 3 then, so that's going to be 24 to 33. So A to B and B to C, my B's are common with each other now. So A plus B plus C is going to be equal to, well A is 20, B is 24, and C is 33. And 20 plus 24 is 44 plus 33 is going to be 77. So my answer for A plus B plus C is going to be equal to 77. Okay, question 19. Tom picks a three digit even number. The first digit is greater than six. The second digit is less than seven. How many different numbers could he pick? So let's start with the first digit. Okay, so my first digit is greater than six. So it could be seven, eight, nine, and that's it. Okay, so it's gonna be seven hundred uh, and something, eight hundred and something, or nine hundred and something. It can't be greater than that because it's, it's definitely a three digit number. My second digit, well that could be, well it's a digit less than seven, so it could be six, five, four, three, two, one, and also zero, because it could be 800 and something, for example. Okay, um, and my third digit, well, because it's an even number, my third digit could be zero, two, four, six, or eight. Okay, so any of those things are going to form an even number. So for example, I could have 946 or 802. Okay, and those will satisfy each of these um, three rules. Okay, so there are three ways of forming that first number. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways for the second number. And there are one, two, three, four, five ways for that third um, number, third digit, I should say, not number. Okay, so um, how many different numbers could he pick? Well, the combination is going to be three times seven times five. So three times seven is 21 times five gives me 105. Okay, so my answer here is going to be 105 different 
um, numbers that he can form following these these rules here. Okay, question 20. Here is a diagram of a pack of cereal. Eve has a daily allowance of 260 grams of carbohydrates. She says one serving gives more than 9% of my daily allowance. Is she correct? And we need to show our working out. So let's first of all have a look at what one, how many grams one serving would be. So if I start by doing 360 divided by 12, that tells me that one serving is going to be 30 grams. Okay, so that's going to be one serving. Now, per 100 grams, 79 grams are going to be carbohydrates. So that means 79% is going to be carbohydrates. So if I've got 30 gram serving, then 79% of that is going to be carbohydrates. So I'm going to work out 79% of 30 grams and 79% of 30 grams I can use my calculator for this if I do 0 0.79 times 30 and that tells me it's going to be 23.7 grams of carbohydrates Okay, so we've got 23.7 grams of carbs that is going to be in um, one serving. So, um, Eve had a daily allowance of 260 grams, and she, um, we're trying to find out if one serving gives more than 9% of um, her daily allowance. So let's work out what 9% of 260 grams is. So 9% of 260 grams and that's going to be equal to and 0 0.09 which is 9% times by 260 and that gives us 23.4 grams okay of carbs Okay, so this 23.4 grams is 9% of her daily allowance and 23.7 represents what she would actually get from one serving and that is more than her 9% daily allowance. So 23.7 is greater than 23.4 so therefore, um, what's her name, Eve? is correct. Okay, question 21. We need to prove that 5n take away 2n plus 3 times n plus 1 is always negative. So I'm going to start by um, expanding this 2n plus 3 times n plus 1. So let's see, decide what that is in expanded form. So 2n plus 3 times n plus 1 is going to be identical to and if I expand this out um, I'll do a little grid over here so we've got 2n 3 n plus 1 that's going to be 2n squared 2n 3n and 3 and if we sum these together I've got 2n squared plus 2n plus 3n which is 5n plus 3. Okay, so this bit here is 2n squared plus 5n plus 3. And we're subtracting all of this from 5n. So I'm going to have 5n take away 2n squared, take away 5n, take away 3. Because we're subtracting all of this. Yes, yeah, so we're subtracting each of these terms away from 5n. Okay, so, um, and we can, well, we can simplify that because I've got 5n 
take away 5n which will cancel each other out so that and that will cancel each other out so I'm left with negative 2n squared take away 3 or I could write this as negative of 2n squared plus 3 okay so now we're trying to prove that this is always negative well this bit inside the brackets if we ignore the plus 3 the 2n squared well n squared always has to be positive so 2n squared would have to be positive and if I add 3 to a positive number I'm going to get something that's positive so inside the brackets we've got something that's positive so and because that's always going to be positive if I take the negative of that then it has to be negative the whole thing has to be negative so therefore all of this has to be negative the key bit of information is for me to say that n squared is always positive so therefore 2n squared plus 3 is positive therefore negative of 2n squared plus 3 is definitely negative and there you go and, th and that's my complete proof